Hello everyone, I'm Joe Keller and welcome to the Mosaic Church of the Nazarene. Today, Pastor Jeff will sharing from the Word of God titled, Speak Life. But first, please join us in some praise and worship to glorify the Lord.
Good evening, everyone. Pastor Jeff here, Mosaic Church of the Nazarene, back with another midweek devotional. The title for today's message, Speak Life. Speak Life. Um, kind of a sub, a sub, what do they call those? The sub message, the message underneath the message title. Subtitle, How Important Are the Words That We Speak? Speak Life. How important are the words that we speak? Let's start in my fa- one of my favorite books, maybe my all-time favorite. I'd have to think about it, but let's go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verses 20 through 21. It says, "From the fruit of a man's mouth will his stomach is his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips." Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You know, this is the salesman's ultimate Bible verse. (laughs) I don't know if you knew that or not, but I've always related this because I've been in sales for a very long time where I'm selling something. From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in power of the tongue. This is where it takes a little turn. And it makes me wonder, what are they talking about? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruits. What does it mean? Many have interpreted this and verses like it to a name it and claim it type of gospel. Have you you heard of the name it and claim it? I claim health and healing and prosperity in the name of Jesus. See, I come out of a a Pentecostal background, so I can do that good. I can hoop and holler with you. But that may not be what the author of the book who wrote this was trying to convey. I think it may mean something a little bit different rather than speaking what we want and expecting it to come into existence. In the book of Matthew, it explains a little bit. A little bit of this. Matthew chapter 12, verses 35 and th- uh, through 37. It says, A good man brings good things out of the good stored up within him. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Kind of like if you heard the scripture, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's kind of like that. You know, because we have things stored up within us. And eventually they're going to come out. People, you can hide a lot of things from a lot of people, but if you talk enough, you'll tell your own story. Because out of the abundance of what you have in the heart, the mouth speaks. The mouth speaks. But I tell you, verse, verse 36, it says, But I tell you, everyone will have to give an account on the day of judgment for every empty word that they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. So if we apply this back to the first verse, we can see that first verse isn't about naming something and claiming it. From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He's satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's what's coming from inside of us. That's as, as we're held accountable for every idle word. As we're held accountable for that, that's what we're talking about here. Life and death. For by your words you will be acquitted. And by your words you will be condemned. The things that we've said will set us free or will condemn us to isolation and separation from God. Ooh, I didn't mean this to take such a serious, a serious tone, but that's the Word of God, and sometimes that's how it goes. Let's see what the power of God's words are like. You know, we want to be like our Father. We want to be like our Father. But we're going to attribute this to God Himself. Not something that we can do, but in the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 11, it says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, 
but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. God's word has creative power. Does yours? Can you name it and claim it? Can you speak something and expect it to come to pass? Do you have that creative power? You're a son of the king. You probably don't, though. There's things we are limited with. Where God had spoke and then there was light. He spoke that. Can you speak light into existence? No, of course we can't. So therefore, to, to, to name something and claim it may be a little bit out. Now, there is having faith for something and believing God and asking in prayer and in faith. I am 1,000% against you, or, or with you, I'm sorry, on that one. I'm 1,000% with you on that one. But name it and claim it, okay, I'll get off of that now. If we speak only good things, here's one thing that I have noticed, though, personally. For the things going back to what we speak, if we speak only good things, will those things to be, be drawn to us if, if we only talk good? You know, there was uh, books out in the past, The Power of Positive Thinking, and, uh, you know, Norman Vincent Peale, I think, was the one with that. Little, you know, it wasn't a, it was a good positive book. It was a good positive book. Speaking those things that are positive are, you know, it's a wonderful thing to do. But uh, here's, I'll, I'll tell you where that and how that actually comes into play. What about negative things? If you're always talking negative things, are you drawing that negative energy to you? I don't know about things being drawn to us, but to me that sounds a little new age, uh, new age mysticism to me. But I do think that by speaking good or bad things, they will be drawn to the forefront of our thinking and our thoughts will make us more aware of these good or bad things. Let me give you an example. I used to drive to Detroit every day, drive to Detroit. Worst drivers in the world, horrible, horrible, I'm telling you. They're just mean over there. Uh, I, I might have said this before, but in Detroit, putting on your blinker is a sign of weakness. You just cut over. You got to cut over because if you put your blinker on, everybody speeds up so you can't get over. That's all I used to see, and I don't know what happened. But one day, it had to be an intervention from God. He told me, look for the good things because that's all I'd seen was bad things. And I must have been in a particularly good mood. The, the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. I don't know what it was, but, well, look at there. Somebody put their blinker on and somebody let them in. <laughs> don't they know the rules down here? After that, and that just started a chain of events where I started noticing good things. And it was probably just my attitude. I was used to, you know, drive home, getting stuck in traffic, there's an accident on the other side of the expressway. How come we're coming to a stop? It's not, it's not hard to get frustrated with driving in Detroit or, or any con congested city. So I got used to just looking and thinking about the bad things. But when I started to think on the good things, I started seeing more good things. It brought it to the forefront. I wasn't drawing good things to me, just like I didn't draw those bad drivers to do bad things. But that's what my focus was on. My focus was on the bad, so I seen the bad. When I changed my focus to the good, I was able to see the good. But like we mentioned before, there is power of life and death in the things that we say. Well, what can we say? in our lives that are life-giving? What can we say that are positive things, life-giving things, so that we can have the better things brought to the forefronts of our minds so that we can be in good moods? I thank God for good health. Now, my health hasn't always been the greatest, but 90, I would say, gee whiz, for as long as I've been on this earth, 90, 99% of the time, my health has been awesome. I thank God every day for good health and allowing me 
to go to work, uh, to have joy, to have fellowship with people, to worship here in his house, to come and share the message of God. I thank God for good health. I thank God for protecting me from harm and evil. I thank God for meeting all my needs. These are the positive. These are life-giving things that I choose to speak. In the book of James, it says, uh, in the book uh, of James chapter 1, verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. These good things, these wonderful things that God has given me, man, that's, that's right where it comes from, is from God. The bad things, not so much. Bad things are honestly and realistically probably the result of my own bad behavior, my own bad actions. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, you know, I, I would bet a shiny nickel. I'm not much of a gambling man, but a shiny nickel would probably get, uh, you know, get you a little bit more wealthy in regards if you wanted to bet me on that one. What are the things regarding death? Okay, we've talked about speaking life, speaking life, the power of our words. What are the things of death that we sometimes speak. I hate this house. You know, you're frustrated at home. You're, you're, everything's good. You had a hard day. I hate where I work. Oh my gosh. My boss is awful. You're an idiot. <laughs> oh my gosh. There are plenty of things and some of us speak much more death than we speak life. But realize, realize that you're bringing these negative things to the forefront of your thinking. I don't believe you're creating, you're not creating death, but you're creating a bad atmosphere within your body. By speaking good things, you're creating a good atmosphere and, and you're looking at finding good things within your life. When you speak those bad things, it dwells within and it finds more bad things. I notice that sometimes with customers. If something goes wrong, we do furnace and air conditioning installations. Something goes wrong, that's when the customers tend to look for other things that have went wrong. And they come to you not with one problem, but with five. <laughs> that's a, it, that is honest to goodness truth. If they find something wrong, they're going to find five things wrong because that's what they do. That environment has been created within them. In the book of Ephesians, almost ready to wrap up here, chapter 4, verse 29, it says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths. I hate this place. My boss is awful. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who, who hear what you have to say. Let's work on changing our tone, our voice, our attitude, the things that we say. Speak life. In the book of Luke, my last, oh, two more. These are, these are really good. In the book, book of Luke, Luke chapter 6, verse 45, it says, A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance, we shared this before, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And finally, in the book of Romans, we're going to bring this to real life application here. The best thing you can do, the best life you can speak. Romans 10.10 10. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Have you spoke those words? Do you believe in the Lord Jesus? He believes in you. He wants to save you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to be your God. He wants you to live for Him because He died for you. Think about that. Thank you for listening. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you for this word, Lord. Thank you that you would help us to watch our words, to guard our hearts, to speak life 
instead of bad over the situation. I know, Lord, I know, and we all know, there's bad things that happen, but we just have to bridle. We have, we have to watch our tongues, the things that we say. We have, please help us, Lord, to learn to speak life so we can have that in the forefront of our minds and that we would be sons and daughters of the living God and we just thank you and we give you praise. We pray that you would touch the hearts of those who don't know you, Father, that they would speak the greatest life of all and confess you as Lord. We thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and thank you, for everyone, for tuning in to our weekly devotional. If you have been blessed by today's message and you're watching us on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and click on the bell to be notified of our future videos. Please join us at the next service. We welcome you and your entire family, and you'll find us right across from Skateland here on Dort Highway each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. We pray that the Lord may bless you so that you may then become a blessing to others.